Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Everyday EDC. Today, I'm trying my first hand at a screen-recorded video uh, inspired by, consciously, at least, Instagram. I was looking through Instagram, and there were some pictures of uh, the drunken and the paisan, or paisan that were pretty interesting, but it's kind of like, what the F, are we bringing these back, or what are we doing with these? Subconsciously, I have to admit, I was inspired by Metal Complex. He does do this, so I don't want to be like, Yo, this is a totally genuine idea. This is just going through a catalog with you guys, and this is his thing, but I feel bad, because once I started the idea, I was like, oh, sh**. So, it, it's his thing. So, he does it way better than me. I'm just trying this out. All right, let's, 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 let's get to it, guys. There's a lot to get to. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the whole damn video, the whole damn catalog. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll just skip most of it and kind of zoom in on stuff that looks interesting. So forgive the wonkiness as well. I'm doing this on my phone. So here's the 2022 catalog. Look, there's like 200 and something pages. So we're not getting through all of that without skipping some stuff. So I don't know if they've been doing this, but this is a signature series. Oops, that's going to be a problem. So here we got the Endura and, well, the Endura 4, rather. This one on the left here is in K390. That's pretty sweet. And then we got this full saber grind on the right. That's interesting, but not enough to get me to stop. This is where it gets interesting. Let's see here. This one on the right's in ZDP 189. That could be fun. That's pretty cool. All right. The rest of them, they're all in VG10 otherwise. Uh, let's see. Just a bunch of different more colors. Some with Emerson Waves. It's still all VG10. You know. And they kind of did a Warren Cliff. Let's see. Stop it. They kind of did this Warren Cliff-ish uh, <laughs> serrations on the left. That's that's cool. They have um is this a trainer? I don't know what that is. Like I I don't know. Yeah, it's a trainer, apparently, so you could have a trainer knife. Oh, this is interesting. In titanium and stainless steel. Titanium Damascus on the right. So it's VG10 and Damascus with a titanium handle. And then they have one in serrations. All right. All right. So they're kind of following suit with what they did with that Indela, or the Delica. I think it was a couple of years ago or a year ago. This one, VG10, you got another K390 model coming out. I'm just going to start ripping through this because this is all stuff that we've all seen before. So still using S30V on some of this. Is the pink model, is that? Okay, so this is the breast cancer model, so I should focus in on this at least. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to support breast cancer... They do it here. I don't know anything more than what I just said, so. Mm -mm -mm. Cool little worn clothes. I like those worn clothes that they're coming out with. They're interesting. This is what I was talking about. They did the uh, titanium and Damascus on the right. Maybe they did the Endura before. Maybe they did the Endura before. I, I don't know. Um, I know that they did the Delica because Metal Complex has one. That's something we watch all the time. Oh, that's cool. A Police 4 is coming out in stainless steel. That's that's interesting. That'll be a freaking brick in your pocket, though. Ah, that Cricket. I think I've seen that somewhere. Again, I don't think that's new. But that's that blade shape, I got to tell you guys, it looks dumb as shit but it's going to be extremely useful. So this should be golden Colorado made models. That's cool. All right, so the paramilitary three and two. We have S45 VN and crew wear. So that, oh, that's cool. So apparently they're going to be making a PM2 in crew wear that's available just like a normal run. Uh, kind of like the Maximet. S45, S45. S110 and Maximet are still being made here. 
So that's cool. And it looks like they're not sprint runs or anything. They're just regular models. The camo in S45. The Para 3 in Spy 27, the lightweight. These are both in the S45. S45, what is that? Oh, that's the lightweight, okay. And then you have a Maximum Para 3 on the right. And then an S110. Some more S45. Okay. Oh, so they got the the military. All right. S S thirty. Okay. So what this probably is is models they haven't sold because <laughs> they still got S thirty V laying around. Oh, they're coming out with the military in one in one ten. I don't think they had that. I don't think I've seen the military recently. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we got the little native out here in S30. I like it. The little native is a badass little knife, guys. That's a knife that uh, is a great fifth pocket knife. It's kind of fun. It's relatively ergonomic for the size. It's just really, really good. Oh, and then they got one in a back lock. Get the compression lock one. It's more fun. Carbon fiber and S90V. That's cool. I can do that. I like that one on the right. Carbon fiber and S90V. That's cool. That's a cool combination. The Native Chief. This is my dog. I love the Native Chief, guys. I got it in the M4, and it's just, I love it. And apparently that's all they're going to talk about. <laughs> and that's all there is to say about that. All right. Spyderco Shaman, S30, S30, still? Yep. Okay. Manix 2 Lightweight. I just got my hands on a Manix 2. Love it. Spy 27. Manix 2 might be up there. I like the Manix 2 better than the Shaman. I think it's just fantastic. Uh, CTS BD1 and CTS BD, BD1N. Both BD1N. Maximus and then S110. S110. Oh, it's just a different color blue. And purple and S110 and G10. Da, da, da. S30, S30. These are just the normal models. XL models. And what appears to be S30. Specialty. What do we got here? The Swayback. Never felt it, but it looks cool. The Techno 2. Never felt it and want one. Want a Techno 2. The Bradley Folder. Is this the Gale Bradley 2? What is this? It's an M4. Yeah. Yeah. Gale Bradley 2. I was like, what? They're coming out with what? And then the Val Lawton. I'm not too sure about that. I've seen it, but I don't know anything about it. The Rock. Obnoxious. The Subvert. Obnoxious. So there's no reason for that to exist. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. There is a reason for it to exist, but it's like... it's I, I don't get it. It is massive in your pocket. Maybe it's like a pocket like... And that smuck machete, like if you're going to go trouncing through the woods or something, maybe. All right. Trainers, I kind of don't get the idea of a trainer unless like you're practicing like your martial arts, maybe. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm skipping some good ones. Hold on. So here's the Yojimbo 2, both still in S30. The Yojimbo still in S30, Yojimbo Trainer. The Canis is coming back. If the Canis comes back out, that'd be cool. I was, I think I, I was a little harsh on that knife. Um, everybody loved it, and I wanted to love it. I loved the profile when it was closed. It was like a little egg, but um, yeah. All right. What the hell is that new? You guys, let me know. The Spider Co. Pical. 
Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about Pakal knives from uh, the Knife Junkie, and that's it, interesting. Definitely goofy looking, right? But I heard that they're stupid comfortable, so, you know, I'd give it a shot. Oh, and, and it's a... Uh, look at that. Just like the Manix 2, they got it on the freaking uh, ball... What do they call that? The, cape, the ball bearing uh, cage lock. Huh. Interesting. Some flippers. The Amalgam. Heard good things. Smock. Probably my favorite Spyderco. Silver Axe. Ugly as shit. The Akuchi Could be cool. I mean, it's nice and tiny. The Tropin. Dumb. <laughs> cool, but dumb. That is a badass picture right there. Look at this guy. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Spy Opera. I mean, it looks okay. I don't have anything against it. The Capara. The Capara was a beast knife, guys. It didn't really tickle my enthusiast element, but it is so slicey. Uh, it, it, like I said before, it kind of reminds me of the bare knuckle, but like Spider Co's bare knuckle for some reason. In hand, anyways, in the blade shape and whatnot. This is what somebody else was talking about. Like, this is what kind of led me to do this whole thing. They're coming out with the Drunken and the Paison, or Paison, uh, which are two very renowned models. And what's probably pissing people off is they were discontinued. So the secondary market jacks up their prices, right? But now they're saying they're coming back out with them. So the dude who bought it for like 850 which you're an idiot anyways. But the fact that you felt the need of FOMO or fear of missing out type of situation because that they were discontinued models. It's like, that's not right either. Like, I don't know. It, I'm not blaming Spider Co. necessarily for that. And redropping them, I'm sure, is cool so everybody can get their hands. And maybe that's their response to seeing these things overpriced in the secondary. That's Let's take it positively and let's look at it like that. I kind of have intentions on getting the Drunken, assuming that I can get that opening hole from the reverse flick. That would make me very happy. And I really like that design. Although, it kind of looks like a Jurassic and the Jurassic doesn't fit my hand as well as I would like. So I don't know if this is going to be one that I would like in hand. Okay, I'm going to chop this back into the right spot. Uh, I just want to say, while I, I agree with the thoughts on the Instagram post that kind of inspired this whole thing, at the end I had to like check myself and be like, I'm happy these are coming back. All right, let's just leave it at that. Um, it was, it's, I don't think there's any conspiracy between Spider Co. to jack or unjack the prices of something. I think they probably saw a demand and brought them back. Okay. I wanted to clear the air there because I kind of felt bad and, uh, I didn't want to come off as somebody that was just hating on it to hate on it. That's not the point of this, right? Okay. Moving on. I've heard cool things about the McBee, the Poochie. The old Poochie Poochie. All right. The Chaparral, that's one that I've shamefully never held. Um, and as bad as it sounds, it kind of just looks like a Sage 5 to me. Um, maybe a little bit smaller than a Sage 5, like a mini backlock Sage 5. And I'm just kind of, eh, you know, it's a backlock, right? Yeah. Uh, they do some cool stuff with them, though. They do look, they do look good looking. Sage 1, the liner lock. All right, so Alzheimer's Association. I don't know if they're advertising like to donate to them or these knives proceeds go there, but that's nice. The Sage 1 got that liner lock, um, but the Sage 5 was really good. Um, I felt like the neck was too narrow, like right here. I think this is the model I had. I felt like this was too narrow for my grip. I didn't really necessarily like it. But my tastes change all the time, and I feel like I wouldn't feel the exact same way. The other reason, honestly, why I chose the Para 3 over that is there's so many, like, modifications you can do to the Para 3, whereas the Sage 5, you can't. I mean, they, they don't have that much stuff out there for it. Ethnic. What the? <laughs> Respect. That's cool. The Watu, 
I acknowledge is a beast knife. I just don't like it. The patadise. Don't know too much about it. The ambitious. I kind of like the idea of the ambitious. The ambitious looks pretty cool. What is that? 8 CR 13. Still. Okay. So next year, they're still using 8 CR 13 on their fleet. Like, on their budget line. I'm st- At first, you kind of got it. Like, all right, you still got shit left over. You still got this. You still got that. Why don't you just dedicate all that 8 CR 13 to your freaking bird line and then get something? Go to D2 for Christ's sake. If you don't want to go to D2, go to 14C. If you don't want to go to 14C, go to 154. Go to Nitro V. Go to VG10. Oh, wait, VG10 for Spider Co. is in like the $100 range, $150 range. You can go to, uh, shit, what else is there? 9 CR for Christ's sake. Um, there's, there's so many different ones that you can go and just just use different steels. People are tired of seeing 8CR13, and it's got such a stigma with it. I don't necessarily agree or disagree. I'm saying from an enthusiast standpoint, we do not want to see 8CR13 on your freaking budget line anymore. Relegate 8CR13 to your bird line. Okay, I'm done. The resilience looks cool. Bet you it's a really it's it's a performing freaking knife for sure. The efficient kind of like that too because I would never use that swell where you access the liner. I would never use that. Um, and this kind of looks like a uh, a native to me. Emphasis. The emphasis was cool. I think Jake lent in the emphasis to me. Jake Jake V. Um, Way back in the day when he sent me like a box of goodies that was like a ton. <laughs> okay, so the Spyderco Astute, all right? So I bought the Spyderco Astute. It's actually a fantastic little knife. So <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did to it. I have a box of dead dead knives. There's like four or five dead knives in there. And it's from like, I don't know if I tried to mod something. I, I, I don't remember what happened. Like if I was in the middle of something and stopped, I lost a piece or something like that. The Astute made it into my box of dead knives. <laughs> uh, not because it's a bad knife, it's just because, you know. And again, wah, wah, 8 CR13, like, come on. Like this right here, CTS BD1N. Why not? Why not use that? Like, I don't get it. Like, that's that's better than 8 CR. Like, go, go OS10, right? Go to OS10. Shit. Annoying me, man. Pole star. Sounds like a stripper. Cat, Chicago. These are starting to look all the same, you know what I mean? The clip tool. What? What is that? You just got like a bottle opener on the back. Ooh, a seatbelt cutter. That's cool. Oh, it's got a bottle opener and a flathead. And then I don't know what that little thing is that folds out. Oh, that's the top. Wait, what's going on here? There's two. You got like a bottle opener, a can lifter, two different flatheads, and then you got that round piece on the end, and I don't know what that is. Let's see if it tells us. Slip joint, bottle opener, can opener. Okay, bottle and a can opener. All right. Clip it tool. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like they're trying to touch into uh, Swiss Army knives. They might have been doing that forever. I just haven't seen it. The little native non locking. That could be cool. That could be cool. I have the squeak. The squeak's pretty sweet. UK pen knife. These all look like the same. They just like slip joints. They just renamed them. The urban looks kind of cool. But again, that narrow neck kind of throws me off. Yeah, this is what my wife has. She has that pink squeak. Squeak. Squeak, squeak, McSqueakin. I've never actually tried out a roadie, but I've heard. <laughs> yes. But I've heard that they're really good. Okay, screen just decided to open up on me. I'm not sure how that happened. Zoom in a little bit, please. The dog tag folder. Let's be honest, guys. We talk about, like, I'm not telling you not to buy this. But I do this all the time. I'm like, yo, I have 
the mini elementum, which I didn't know was as many as it was till it came in, but I'm like, fuck it. So I had the mini elementum and I'm like, all right. So I put it on my keychain and I'm wearing it at work. Man, you got you always got a damn knife on you anyways. There's never a time that I found myself without a knife when I needed one. With the exception of when I brought both of my knives that I carry with me on a daily, put them on my desk, got called out to something without paying attention to putting one of them back in my pocket, which usually never happens because they're expensive anyways. So you really don't need this shit. Is the long story short. That's cool. Are these like the... Oh, these are kind of cool. VG10. Okay, this is what's going to be irritating. These enoughs. All right, so the enough looks kind of sweet, right? It's the only time that I'm like, yo, FRN looks cool. That's different. Man, That if that's VG10, if they charge you any more than like 80 bucks for that, ooh, and 80 bucks is... is is probably pushing it's a fixed blade it's so much easier to make than a than a freaking folder not taking away anything from fixed blade makers just saying like just this alone is an easier model to craft you don't have to work with tolerances you have a tang and then the tolerances are all on the handle scales as they go together street bowie that does not look street legal it's almost five inches long hmm huh? the street beat that looks cool so that street beat looks kind of cool. I, I could see that. That's a cool knife. I'm not really caring. Bird. Ah, we'll rip through the rest of this. I don't... Bird doesn't interest me as much. They're, they're Spyderco. They just... Okay, so check this out. 8CR13 MOV, right? All right. So this is basically a backlock, either... What is that? Police or Paramilitary 2-ish, Right? I don't know. I know that they have equivalents, the Carry Carry 2. I'm pretty sure it's the PM2, basically. But all you have is like the stupid teardrop opening shape and a back lock, but it's 8CR13. So let's see if I come across a freaking tenacious back lock, which that almost looks like a tenacious back lock, I'm going to be so pissed. Hey, sorry. All right, let's go slower, apparently. Can't handle it. Like that looks like the Delica, right? Meadowlark, Robin. There's your PM2, or Para 3, rather. Ish. The Raven, that's kind of... The Raven's kind... So the Raven kind of reminds me of the Tenacious, and that's in BD1. Like... You know what's dumb? So you got BD-1 and BD-1N. BD-1N is supposedly entirely different than BD-1. Uh, I, I guess that N, the little nitrogen addition, makes a huge difference. I don't know. But I would rather have BD-1 than 8CR-13. Why? Just because. Like, 8CR-13 is so stigmatic at this point. Okay, so these. I have all three of these guys. Now, the Ultra Fine is kind of obnoxious. You don't need it, but you can put a mirror edge on your freaking blade with that Ultra Fine. It's dumb. I can get a mirrored edge almost off of that medium. I don't sharpen necessarily with these. I sharpen, I, I have a weird progression of sharpening that I'm still kind of refining and then I'll come out with. But when I do use these ceramic stones, I always use them at the tail end of the process. I usually will finish up on that medium stone. It deburs things really, really well and it gets such a keen edge off of it. But. Uh, these three, these three stones are fantastic. If you want to get a mirror edge, the ultra fine is, it has done some really good work for me, but you can kind of get it off the medium and fine alone. The ultra fine is harder to find though. And each one of these is like 60 bucks. They're not cheap. And I probably don't use them enough to be like, yo, go get these. But this, that double stuff, I think it is, or no, the pocket stone. I think it's the double stuff because it's got the fine and the medium. I've just taken guys' knives after like, so they're losing their edge. It's basically like I replaced, and you guys might disagree with this, but I don't put a micro bevel on it all the time, but I can kind of replace stropping 
with that fine stone. Um, and, and I find that I am just a wickedly sharp afterwards and I haven't needed to strap. Uh, that's just something, but Hey, this stone right here, guys, is probably one of the most useful little stones that you'll ever come across. Um, and it's not expensive. And then the leather on the outside acts as a strop. It's nice leather too. So what I will do is I'll kind of hone my edge or sharpen somebody's knife at work, especially like some shittier steels, like because most dudes don't bring like super high quality steel. So you can get a really good edge off of that medium stone. Switch over to the fine. You deburr both sides and then you take it through the freaking strop. Oh man, I've gotten some, some of my sharpest edges are off that tiny little pocket stone. Yeah, and that's the end. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am going to be uploading. So if you've gotten to this point, this is going to be in both videos. I'm going to upload two videos. I'm going to do the long video and then I'm going to do a short video. The long video is literally me going through what you guys like, not what you guys, but what I just did the whole thing, right? Pretty much unedited short of like interruptions with the kids. Uh, but the short video will, I will just hit the stuff that's interesting to me. Um, and it won't be long. So if you guys watch the short video and you're interested in the long video, go for it. Uh, but the long video, you don't need to go watch the short video again. This is just literally one or the other uh, type of thing. If you want the short down and dirty for the interesting stuff, go for it. If you want the whole big shebang, there you go. Give me feedback on this, guys. This is the first screen recorded thing that we've done. Again, not trying to steal Metal Complex's thunder. That's not what the point of this was. I think everybody kind of goes through it a little bit, but... Uh, I give him credit because he's the one that I will watch even after going through it just to hear his thoughts. So uh, there's no relationship or nothing there. It's just I felt bad doing this because I felt like this was his. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just putting that out there. I'm not trying to steal his thunder. He Go watch his too. He will give way better insight and thoughts on this stuff. But all right. That's all I got for you guys. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.